think beauty is only skin deep, think again. Beauty queens are becoming more aware, vocal, and passionate of their responsibilities for the planet and for all fellow living beings, humans or otherwise. We are here at the Diamond Hotel in Manila to witness a special component of the Miss Earth during pre-pageant competitions, the intelligence judging. Later on, we'll be picking the brains of some of the candidates and find out their reasons for going meeting. Now, what does going deepness have to do with the Miss Earth beauty pageant? Apparently, there's a stronger link than meets the eye. Just recently, the pageant organizers included Meatless Mondays in their key activities. So for the Miss Earth 2019, there will be the groundbreaking inclusion of vegan and vegan-friendly food brands and restaurants such as Corn Philippines, Cafe Nenzo, Indulge, Go Salads, Veggie Guys, Good Choices, and Preso Tea, among others as partners. But why stop at one pageant? And why limit your planet-saving diets and lifestyles to just Mondays? Test Drive hopes that all beauty pageants will make the environment and animal compassion part of their advocacies so that one day, all of us will go meatless. Not just for the sake of beauty, but also for humanity. I'm extremely happy that Miss Earth is promoting Meatless Mondays and this is such a revolution because uh, as the population is growing, the meat consumption is also growing a lot and this meat consumption is actually a cause for greenhouse gases and climate change which is happening. So if at least for one day in a week, if we could not take meat, that, that could actually contribute in a huge way to the environment and I think Miss Earth is doing a wonderful job. Go needless for the animals, go needless for the environment. Friends, not food. One of the first reasons I'm vegan is the ecology, of course. And um, when you look at livestock farming, 70% of climate change is caused by the production of meat and the dairy industry. I believe that the solution to this is to introduce more plant-based products onto the market so that people have greater choices and don't have to sacrifice their taste. Personally, meat-free Mondays are a really good option. Every year, Miss Earth as a pageant, uh, local and internationally, we always try our best to do eco-friendly practices to make the pageant more sincere with its advocacy for the environment. For the past year, we have eliminated plastic straws, and then slowly we're eliminating the use of plastic in many aspects of the pageant, including, for example, in Miss Philippines, our stage was made out of recycled materials. So this year, acknowledging that the meat industry is a big contributor to our carbon emissions. Um, we started doing Meatless Mondays. And by doing at least once a week, by doing Meatless Mondays, we have small contribution. Sabi nga nila, actually, there are a lot of people who are saying that a real environmentalist is vegetarian. Or if you can't do that, if you can go vegan, at least have once a day na you can dedicate to the environment. Go Meatless for the animals, go Meatless for the environment. Worldwide meat production from cattle, buffalo, sheep, goats, camels, pigs, and poultry emits more atmospheric greenhouse gases or GHGs than do all forms of global transportation or industrial processes. Livestock farming accounts for the use of 70% of the global freshwater and 38% of the world's land use conversion. Some 70% of the Amazon rainforest, in fact, has already been cleared for grazing and feed crop production. An article titled Livestock and Climate Change published in the issue of World Watch magazine reported that livestock and their byproducts actually account for at least 32.6 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year or 51% of annual worldwide GHG emissions. According to analysis, the life cycle and supply chain of livestock products is actually responsible for at least 51% of all anthropogenic GHGs. The food and climate connection may not be obvious to many, 
But just think of the amount of energy and fossil fuels it takes to raise and slaughter the approximately 65 billion land animals in 2011 alone. 45% of all Earth's land area is now being used for livestock and feed production instead of growing trees to absorb excess greenhouse gases. And instead of growing food to feed the hungry, 20% of pastures are already degraded through overgrazing and erosion. 